Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you are doing well. So today we will start reviewing the book. Firstly, we will start with unit one. Unit one, it's about, or oh, 1.1, it's about photosynthesis. Firstly, everyone, you should know the definition of photosynthesis. You studied photosynthesis in grade eight and also grade seven. So the sim a simple definition for photosynthesis, we will say it's a process in which green plants makes their own food. A process in which green plants make their own food. This is the easiest definition for uh, photosynthesis. One more thing about photosynthesis, it's the formula. The formula of photosynthesis. As we know, this process to happen, to take place, it needs some substances. For example, firstly, it needs carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Plants get their carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, from the air. And also it needs water. Water, plants can absorb water from soil through roots. Then, by the help of sunlight, by the help of sunlight, this carbon dioxide and water will be transferred into food, into sugar. The sugar, we call it glucose. Glucose plus oxygen. The oxygen, the gas, the oxygen gas will be released to the atmosphere. This process in photosynthesis, what it's happening, it's transferring of energy, transferring energy from Sun, first from sunlight, this light will be absorbed by a plant by a specific pigment, we call it chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, it's the green pigment that captures sunlight. This process, the process of photosynthesis, it happened in the leaves, in the leaves of plant. As you can see here in this drawing, here it's a plant cell. This is a plant cell. It consists of, as you can see, the green parts. Okay, this one, it's, chlor it's chloroplast. This chloroplast, each chloroplast organelle, it has chlorophyll in it. This chlorophyll will help to capture sunlight. Then, some questions. Think back to, or remember, what do you have already learned about photosynthesis? About what we, what we just explained. A. Where do plants get carbon dioxide from? What do you think? From where plants will get the carbon dioxide? From atmosphere. Correct. B. Where do plants get water for, from? As we know. Plants will get water from soil. Then, explain why photosynthesis only takes place inside chloroplast. Here, if you can, see, if you will take a look on the plant cell, you will see it consists of many organelle. It has vacuole, cytoplasm, nucleus, um, and chloroplast. Why the process of photosynthesis? It's happening only inside the chloroplast the answer is because chloroplast it has chlorophyll chlorophyll the pigment that it capture sunlight okay part two now <clears throat> when plant will make sugar or food for itself usually plants make more what they need more than what they need. So, it will use some of the sugar and the extra one will be stored. Then, what will happen? Plant will store the extra sugar, okay? Because glucose is soluble in water, so if plant will keep the extra 
food or the extra sugar just as glucose so this glucose will dissolve in the water inside the cell so to, pre to prevent this from happening plant will store glucose inside uh, inside the cells of it in a different kind of carbohydrates so the glucose glucose is an example of carbohydrate but carbohydrates we have different types of it for example the glucose will be stored inside the plant as starch so what's a starch starch it's a molecule it's made of thousands of glucose molecule linked together so thousands of glucose linked together they form a starch starch it's insoluble okay starch molecule are too big to dissolve in water so in this way plants will prevent the glucose from dissolving in the water 1.2 mineral salts for plants as you know plants to grow it needs food it needs water it needs carbon dioxide but in addition to the water and carbon dioxide it's still plant cells needs some uh, some substances for example these substances we call them mineral salts or another meaning or another word name for it it's fertilizers of course all of you you saw um, farmers okay when they want to grow plants okay what they do they add some fertilizers to the soil these fertilizers will uh, plants will absorb it and then will use it in different ways we have two main types of uh, fertilizers these two main types of fertilizers are nitrate and the second one it's magnesium so two main fertilizers two main mineral salts nitrate and magnesium so what's the function of each one of these uh, fertilizers or this uh, mineral salt nitrate is needed so that plant can make protein okay so plants will need nitrate or will use nitrate to make proteins and as you know the function of proteins in the cell it it help making new cells what's that mean it help plant to grow so as you can see here plants that are short of nitrate are stunted small and yellow if you look at these two drawing you will see here we have same kind of plant but here it's green it's big but here it's small and yellow the why 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 these two plants are in this way it's because of the uh, protein here this plant it's getting enough amount of protein while this plant it's not get getting enough amount of protein so nitrate it's needed for plant to make protein what's the function of protein it to it help making new cells then magnesium magnesium also it's needed for what it's needed for making chlorophyll so what do you think if we have a plant without magnesium or less amount of magnesium how this plant will look like here we have the answer if you look at this leaf usually as we know the leaf colors it's what it's always green okay more usually it's green but as you can see here what it's happening the leaf it turned to be yellow so this tomato leaf is showing symptoms of magnesium deficiency magnesium deficiency it means less uh, magnesium inside the cells 1.3 plants and water water we just explained that 
plants it needs water for photosynthesis but in fact plants will need water for many reasons oh it's not only for just for uh, doing the photosynthesis water for support plants needs water for supporting itself for example if you will take a look now on these two plants we said in photosynthesis uh, plants will uh, use water will need water okay so how this water it's transporting from or how this water it's going up from uh, so from soil to the to the stem and then to the leaves it's through these tubes so water okay water will moves up to the leaves okay while the water it's moving up to the leaves okay there are mineral salts dissolved in water there are minerals salt salts dissolved in the water and this is how they are transported around the plant then water for cooling plants the plant is same as us as humans as when we feel it's hot what will happen our bodies will start sweating by sweating our bodies will cool down the same thing it's happening in plants when we say plants will absorb water and water it gets in the xylem and then into the leaves inside a leaf here it's a leaf okay this structure it's uh, a leaf okay and this leaf it has opening in it we call it stoma or stomata so when water it evaporates through this stomata when it evaporates it will take some of the heat from with it so water evaporates through stomata it takes some of the heat then at the end what will happen the plant will cool down four 1.4 flowers flowers if you look at this picture you will see we have different kinds of flowers uh, with uh, different shapes different colors bright colors okay but what do you mean by flowers or what are flowers flowers are the reproductive organs of plants okay so flowers are the reproductive organs of plant what's that mean plants to grow to reproduce it will need flowers so then if we will take a look on flower we will see a flower it looks like this and it has different parts different parts each part with a specific function for it firstly a plant it consists of two parts two uh, or the, the reproductive organs we have two types of reproductive organs we have the male reproductive organ okay which it's this one these two parts okay this we call them male okay reproductive organs and here if you look at this part okay this one this part this is the female reproductive organ female reproductive organ okay now let's see what is the function of each part okay firstly let's take a look on all the parts of it now as we say we have the male this one reproductive organ 
and the female reproductive organ. Then, in addition to these uh, two main organs or two main parts, we have other parts. Firstly, this part, the colored part, we call it petal. Petal. Petal, it's the colored leaves, okay? The function of these colored uh, leaves is to attract the insects. Attracts insects, example, uh, bees. The function of these bees is to help these plants to reproduce. How? We will see later. Then, petal, the first one, then the green leaf, as you can see, this part, okay, we call it sepal. So, petal, sepal are just two secondary organs or uh, accessory uh, organs. These organs, it just help. The, it protects the flower, it helps the flower for the process of uh, reproduction. But because we are talking about the reproductive organ or about reproduction, so we will care mostly about these two main organs, the female reproductive organ and male reproductive organ. Okay, so here we will see the function of each part. As we said, petal okay usually most colorful parts of flower the function of it it's to attract insect or birds to the flower okay petal attract insects or birds to the flower then after that we have uh, pollen okay the insects and or bird uh, feed on sweet sugary nectar produced at the base of petal they may also eat some of the pollen. Pollen, what do you mean by pollen? It's the, uh, it's like, it's the sex cells or it's the reproductive cells for the uh, plant. This pollen are produced in, uh, in the anther here, this part, the anther, okay. Anther, it's a part of male reproductive organ the function of it is to make the pollen, okay? Then, pollen, okay, produced in anther. So, if you will have a question, it says, what is the function of anther? So, the function of anther is to produce the pollen. Then, after that, the female gametes are inside the ovule, where, which, which are inside the ovary. Here, it's the ovary. This part, it's like oval. It has oval shape. This is the ovary. Inside it, okay, this part, we call it ovule. Ovule, it's what? It's the gamete of female uh, cells. Then, 1.5. 1.5, it's about pollination 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 it's a process for uh, reproduction so if we want to give a definition for pollination we will say it's the transfer of pollen okay the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma here we have pollens, pollens inside anther. So the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma, this process, we call it pollination. Okay. This process, we call it pollination. So as we just said, pollination it's the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma, which is called pollination. But how this pollen will transfer from uh, anther to the stigma? By what? By the help of what? This process, it happened by the help of many, uh, many things. For example, firstly, insects. When you look at flowers, you will see bees 
are moving from one flower to the other from from one flower to another so here what is happening when a bee it sit on a flower some of these pollens will stick to the body of it then when this bee it moves to the other flower what will happen some of these pollens will be transferred to the next flower so this is first example uh, the, the second example is by wind pollens are tiny are small and light so it can move it can be pushed by air so by wind when in during a windy day so what will happen some of these pollens will transfer from one flower to another or sometimes by uh, for example animals as we as you can see at uh, this example if you look at this example we have a uh, bird okay so here are some ways in which uh, pollen grains will transfer from one, from anther to the stigma okay now some questions why are the female gametes found in a flower what's the function why the gametes are found in a flower so the answer is to what to okay to pro reproduce then where are the male gametes found in a flower if we will go back to the structure of flower okay where we can find the pollen or where we can the male the pollen gametes we can find them here inside the anther Question number three, explain why plants need help to get their male gametes to their female gametes. Okay, explain why these gametes, the male gametes, should get to the female gamete. What do you think? So, the answer here will be to reproduce. So, it can fertilize each other and then reproduce 1.6 1.6 fertilization fertilization now after we talked about the structure of plant parts of flower and the process of pollination now we will start talking about fertilization what's what's fertilization or what do you mean by fertilization in pollination we said the pollen will transfer from anther to stigma and then it goes through the uh, flower part let's go back here so when the pollen will transfer from anther to the stigma then it goes through the pollen tube okay it goes from anther to stigma then it goes through the style until it reach the ovary and then ovule so pollen it has nucleus in it so this part we will call it nucleus and same thing here we have okay nucleus so when the nucleus of pollen join with nucleus of ovary uh, ovule sorry joining of nucleus of pollen with the nucleus of ovule this process we call it fertilization okay so in sexual reproduction here by the way students you need to focus on the highlight the, the parts that I highlight them because these are the most important parts so in sexual reproduction the nucleus of male gamete which is pollen okay and the nucleus of female gamete which is the ovule join together this process we call it 
fertilization. Then, after that, now we have male. So here we have the male cell, the female cell. When this male and female cell, okay, join together, they form a new cell. This cell we call it what? We call it zygote. So, what do we call the cell? It's zygote. So, if we want to give a definition for zygote, we will say when the nuclei of the two gametes have joined together, they form a new cell. This cell is called zygote. So, now if you look at this drawing, here this, this drawing it shows the fertilization in a flower. So, here firstly we have pollen. Okay, a tube grows out of pollen grain on the stigma. By the way, here the process of photosynthesis it's happening after the process of the after the process of fertilization. So, a pollen, oh, sorry, a tube it will grow from the pollen. Here it's the tube. It goes through the uh, stigma, then style until it will reach the ovary and then the ovule. Here, the male gamete fuses with the female gamete inside the ovule. So, here, what is happening? The nucleus of male gamete will join to the female, uh, the, to the nucleus of female gamete. Okay? So, when these two nucleus fuse with each other, now this process, we call it fertilization then after fertilization some changes will happen to the plant for example here we have what do we call we call it seed formation seed formation what do you mean by seed formation is when the male nucleus fuses with the female nucleus inside the ovule as we say it they will produce a zygote so this zygote okay start to divide so here it's the zygote this zygote will start to divide it will be in this shape okay so here what it's happening it's dividing it's making uh, more new cells so this zygote will turn to be embryo while the ovule okay here it's the green part the ovule will turn to be seed. So here it's how seed it will 1.7 fruits. How fruits will form after fertilization, after forming the embryo and the seed. So here, this part, what do you think? What do we call this part? What is the name of this part? This part we call it ovary. So after fertilization, the ovary will turn to be fruit. The ovary will turn to be fruit. So just focus on these two uh, parts. Ovary will turn to be fruit, while ovule will turn to be seed. Okay? So this was everything about unit 1. I hope you, you will get benefit from it. If you have uh, any questions, if you have something that's still not clear, that you can contact me.